Well, hello, my friends. It's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look at this beauty. Here are all the fun supplies that we use today. So I'm starting today's project on um, Bristol paper. It I have it taped out with painter's tape at 11 by 14 size. Um, I have cut out my coloring page, and if you haven't gotten your free coloring page in the shop, you can do that. I kind of fussy cut it a little bit. And then I'm going to, I kind of sketched out where I was going to put it. I've got my Lucas paints out and I'm watering things down and just really kind of making a messy background with some teal and some um, Arctic color. Um, and just really kind of getting some color down for my background. And I just wanted to do this to be able to show you what you can do with those coloring pages. You can really introduce a lot of mixed media to it. We're going to be doing a lot of that um, over the next couple of weeks with these coloring pages. And um, so this is the first one, and it is a good one. So I'm just getting a bunch of color down, and you can see I'm I have very painterly strokes. I want it to be. Um, really kind of I want a lot of movement um, so I grabbed a little bit of gray now and I'm going to introduce that and I'll introduce some titanium white just to get some highlights and some low lights so that there's lots and lots of movement and highlight and, and low lights in that background and we're going to be putting paint over it so I'm not worried about how it looks and I just really want a lot of um, depth to it a little bit of movement in there so I'm just kind of brushing that on I did start out with my Bristol paper this is a uh, hundred pound Brist Bristol paper I did put gesso down first um, just regular white gesso now I've got a little bit of yellow ochre out here and again this is a Lucas paint and it is watered down just a little bit not too much it's not really real soupy soupy but just a little bit wet to get it to move and so that I can pick it up through my stencil. This um, is a modern pattern one stencil, I believe. All the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog will be down below in the YouTube description box. And all the stencils that I use today will be on sale this week. So I found the skinniest washi tape that I could find and I'm just, I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing it and and putting my tape out <clears throat> because I was trying to achieve this look of old wallpaper that had seams and was peeling and grungy of course and so I took some gray Lucas paints full strength not watered down and I'm pushing it through my stencil like I have done before with gesso um, but when I push it against the stencil it it builds up against the sides and it creates wonderful texture. I'm not trying to be too particular. I want it to be uneven and some hot areas higher and some areas lower and um, so that it resembles that wallpaper kind of um, worn and faded wallpaper. So I did that all over the background and that's with the gray Lucas paint. Peeling up the tape here to reveal those lines and I love it just made me happy so so happy look at how pretty that is I just love it so of course it wasn't grungy enough for me so I just want I took a little bit of gesso with my palette knife and just put a little bit of um, swashes with my palette knife kind of skipping it um, along uh, certain areas again to give it that kind of faded worn like maybe the plaster showing the wallpapers come off and the plaster is showing and so I'll just smooth that out with my palette knife and then um, let that dry I'm just double checking to see okay where everything's at do I need to add a little bit more here or there and now with some raw umber and this is Lucas paint with some raw umber I've got it really watery really soupy and I'm just doing a wash and I'm just gonna pull that up and um, wipe it back and as I add I'll pull it up and add dark and light and add a little bit of water to my rag to kind of wet that down and and really kind of create some again highlights and low lifes because when you when you're thinking about aging something it's not even all the way around there's spots that are more worn and that kind of thing and, and that's the look I was going for 
And I did that all over the piece just because I love it so much. Really wiping that back and then I'm just going to come back in and just add all the grungy goodness around the edge and just really grungy it up. Just makes this grungy girl's heart happy. And I just wet my rag with, if it wasn't moving, I'll just wet my rag because it's not completely dry. I can pull it up exactly where I want it to. Come back in and add a little bit more if I want to. But really getting that old worn wallpaper feel. And I love, love it. A little bit of alcohol on my rag to just go over the areas that are lifted and it just highlights it brings the paint off of those areas and really just high, gives a little bit of highlight along with all the depth that we've got to really make it truly interesting I always have to have a window in my scenes and I'm I, I realize that and I'm not exactly sure why I think it's just like a window to the soul but again this is the window stencil and it'll be on sale and um, yeah I think I always usually have a window in some of, in most of my flower scenes which I'm not sure why I'm gonna have to dive your deeper into that but I'm just outlining my window with my um, raw umber and then I'm um, highlighting the window panes to make them uh, feel like they're a little bit more transparent and to kind of hide that background in the back. So I always make a couple of copies of my coloring pages when I'm using them like this so that I can use them to trace with or cut out with or whatever I might need. And so what I'm doing is I've just grabbed some vintage wallpaper and this is one of the new vintage wallpapers that's in the shop. Um, and I'm tracing out exactly the shape of the leaf that because it kind of cuts out a little bit behind the flower. Um, and I'm going to take all of my bits and pieces and add them to my coloring page so that this gives the illusion that we have created this from scratch, that it's not a coloring page. And you can do this with any type of coloring page. Um, but you'll see once we start putting it all together, how all of the leaves fit. It's like putting a puzzle together. And I do that with the flower petals as well. I create, I cut out a few extra leaves because I thought, you know, I'm gonna throw in a few more um, leaves to add some pizzazz to it. So I've got everything laid out and what I typically do, I'm using matte gel because it's nice and heavy and everything stays in place right away and I don't get any wrinkling. But I put one corner of my coloring page down and then lift the edges up and put my matte medium underneath so that it stays exactly in the spot that I wanted it. And you can see how I'm putting my leaves right down on top of what I traced and it, they fit just like a puzzle. So I'll pull up every corner and add my gel medium to that and then add my additional leaves as well. But I, I do that so that the edges stay up so I can add my leaves in the spots that I want them. You can see how that leaf just fit right around the flowers. I cut them out just perfectly to fit around each piece. I did forget the very bottom leaf and that'll show up in later in the video. I saw it on my table, I was like, oh, oh yeah. Get that all covered with some matte medium and I'll cover the whole piece with matte medium so that everything kind of has the same texture. And you can see here I'm doing the same thing with my flower petals and you could do as many flowers as you want. I do these petals kind of the forefront of the flower and then I'll do a couple extra pieces for another 
another one of the flowers. So I'm using fluid acrylics now. And the reason I'm using fluid acrylics is because they are very transparent. And I want them to be transparent because I want to see the lines. I want to see all of that detail in my coloring page. And so I can paint right over it. It's super easy. I'm not having to stay in the lines or anything like that. Um, I'll just paint right over it. And I picked the colors that match the, the papers that I use to cut out for my flower petals so that it all works really well together. I am going back and adding some darkening colors, just adding some highlights and lowlights again so that there's some variety to the piece. And I'm going to continue to do this all the way around. And the nice thing about using fluid acrylics is because it is so transparent, you get great color and um, we can just paint right over everything and um, I don't have to worry about the lines um, being hidden or anything like that. I am using a couple different size brushes to fit this, the areas that I'm working on. Um, and some areas, I'm not being very particular about it. I'm going outside the lines. Um, it's all going to work. And you can see here, I'm actually even adding more. Like I love the color of the, the, that bright green leaves, so I thought, oh, I'll just add a few more. And I'm just basically going to fill in all of the spaces. And um, I use a variety of fluid acrylics, quinacridone magenta, um, yellow ochre, nickel azo gold, cerulean blue hue, deep magenta or quinacridone magenta. The one thing I am doing is choosing the colors that I like and trying to make sure that they're evenly. So I've got some red up at the top and I'll bring some red down to the bottom. This is kind of an orangey color so it's got some of that poppy color in it. I'm using um, three different types of greens, some brighter greens and some darker greens to again balance the piece out. I'm coming back in and adding some um, darker areas just to add some depth and dimension and this is a lighter version of that poppy color to keep things kind of cohesive and you can see where I have some white spaces and I'm filling in my branches and then taking a little bit of the color that's very similar to the color of the background and I will fill some of that in. I'm not too worried about it because I will be coming back in and shading around the piece and that covers a lot of that up. So I'm going to add my vase and this is nickel azo gold and um, I painted the very bottom stripe and that was not supposed to be painted so you'll see me wipe that up. I was like, oh, I did the wrong color. So I've cut some scraps from, or cut some yeah, pieces from some scrap collage paper and added it to the petals of the poppy and then adding the um, petals that I cut out to my flower. I just love how this turned out. It, it's just fantastic. I love being able to integrate something so simple as a coloring page into all of the mixed media that we're doing on this project. I did go over the cutout pieces on the poppy with a little bit of red to kind of make it blend in just a little bit more. 
And so now I begin the process of shading and shading is really the key for this piece. Um, integrating all of the elements together and making that um, coloring page really not feel like a coloring page. I'll go over all of the lines with my charcoal pencil and kind of blend that out and then I'll of course add my shading and the light is coming from the window so the shadow is going to be on the other side um, that's not towards the window. I will also add highlights up on top of the flowers where the light would be and then add some darker parts at the butt base of the flowers where the shadow would be. But you can see I'm just going over all of the lines and really making it stand out. I'll shade my window. I won't make you watch all of the shading. It gets really boring. But making sure to add that shading because it really does add depth. So I've grabbed my um, Soho Soft Pastels and here you'll see I'm adding the all the fun, the light, the dark, um, all the highlights to the petals that really it really changes everything when you add those highlights and you could use markers you could use china markers you could use and I end up using a china marker on that very main flower that focal point flower that I'm working on right now I'll get my china marker out at the end because I just couldn't get I didn't get enough light on it and I wanted it to stand out just a little bit more but um, adding a little bit of teal and highlights to the leaves really makes it just pop. So I'll add some shading around the edges um, with a soft black soft, soft pastel. You can see how all of that little bit of shading, those touches of lights and darks, really makes a difference in a piece and adds variety. And soft pastels are a wonderful way to do that without any risk at all. Here's my china marker. And then I'm going to come back in and use that fine, oh, here's my Spectrafix, I forgot. Um, make sure to spray because um, you're using all kinds of water soluble products. I'm going to trace my words out here again with my graphite paper and use my Posca pen to fill it in and that is it. I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, subscribe and like and stick around for the conversation. Oh my gosh, I had to find the beauty this week. I needed it so much. All right, my friends, I'll see you next week. Well, hello, my loves. Happy Sunday to you. So today I used um, one of the pages from the coloring pages um, downloads in the shop. Um, these have been free for the last couple of weeks and I'll have them free for a couple more days um, in case you want to get them because um, next week on Friday, let's see, next week, Thursday or Friday, <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what day it is anymore. Um, I'm going to continue on with the rest of the collage or uh, coloring uh, pages and do some fun things like I did with this one. Um, they won't be all as in-depth as this one. I did a lot to this, but I want to be able to show you how you can take my coloring pages or anybody's. I mean, there's all kinds of coloring book pages for adults out there right now and how you can really introduce it into mixed media and all the different things. I mean, we did a lot of fun things on this one and I just love it. I love the colors. Um, but the nice thing is, is that you can play with the backgrounds, but you've got the main designs. Um, and then um, we'll do some simpler ones where we explore maybe um, markers or gouache, watercolors, different things like that. So hopefully that'll be fun for you and another free um, thing for you to 
create along with me and distract you from all that is going on and helping you at your in your stay at home stay that kind of thing so but um, I just love how this turned out um, I'm I love the paper that I created it on it's just it, it's the colors are gorgeous and I had a lot of fun and that's that's the most important thing um, the stencils that I used today there are three of them the window and then the two background ones um, will be on sale this week and then all of the supplies of course will be listed um, on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box okay so um, this obviously is exactly what it is find the beauty um, I think we all are searching for the beauty in in our day to day right now and um, sometimes it can be as simple as um, a walk around the block or flowers that came up come up and um, that's kind of why I went with the flowers today I have in my garden I have this area that has trees and I've put the um, weed tarp down so that no weeds or anything can grow up and it's just got mulch but there's this one flower that has broken through the barrier the the tr the weed barrier everything and has bloomed and it blooms every year and um, normally I'm kind of I'm like oh, gosh darn it but this year it was like oh, that flower is refusing to bloom and um, I'm like gosh we need I need that kind of strength right now and so that moment that's that's that find the beauty it was a beautiful moment for me it was it stopped me in my tracks and I was like wow I mean there's snow still on the ground and this flower has worked its way through all of the things to bloom and that's where we are today we're working our way through all of the things and all of the crisis and all of the stuff to bloom and um, I hope I have half of the strength that that flower has but it's those kinds of things that I'm desperately searching for in my day-to-day -day right now finding the beauty finding the single beauty of maybe the dog the dogs cuddling with me or finding the beauty in a good book or finding the beauty in being able to get my orders all out or finding the beauty in whatever it is in creating and that's usually where I find my beauty is in in the creative process and so I hope that you take just a second because we have to be mindful I could have walked past that flower and not even noticed it or I could have walked past the flower and been angry with it because it grew up and there's weeds coming up now and broke through the barrier but I saw the beauty in that moment in that thing in the the symbolism I found the beauty and that's what we need to do so earnestly today is find the beauty in some of the most simplest simplest things all right my loves I hope your Sunday is wonderful I hope you will get your free downloads while they're still free and join me next week on Thursday or Friday and um, we'll continue doing our coloring pages and having fun and just a kind of exploring but the coloring pages are super easy because you don't have to think about it and I love that so all right my loves have a wonderful Sunday. Find your beauty and always, always know that you are loved.